Welcome to Planet Golf's review of Taylor May's Stealth Driver. I tested the Stealth Plus. There's three in the range. So there's the Stealth, which is the more forgiving of the three. And then you've got that HD, which is the high draw, which get, I mean, it does what it says on the tin. Basically, it's for those who suffer from a, a slice. So to help correct that. The big talking point, obviously, is the 60 layers of carbon. It's not actually the first time carbon has been used in the face of a driver. Callaway had done it some years ago. There's also this nano texture across the front that's helped to disperse water when it's raining, but how much that really helps, I don't know, because most of the time you're on the tee, you've got your ball in your pocket or you're wiping it down anyway. So, but the 60 layers and, and working with this inertia generator again at the back, I mean, it, with the, the carbon, they've saved 40% weight here. So what they've managed to do, they've got a 10% gram weight that you can move to obviously give you a draw, fade bias, whatever you prefer. But obviously you've got more weight in the inertia generator as well. So you've got all this power coming into the ball and it's just like a big weight smashing the ball. And it, obviously by moving that weight back, they've got a better center of gravity, a better center of gravity gives you a better launch angle as well. And obviously all that power behind the ball. What well, I love the look. I mean, the, you know, you've got the carbon crown here, this it, matte finish round here which I really liked when you're looking down on the ball. And you can ch there's, there's different colors that you can change on the plus. So you can go yellow, blue. There's about six different colors on this. And then you've got this gloss bit around the outside. Red, yellow, oh sorry, yellow. You can get the yellow face, but the, the red flashes around. The, the club make it look, it's got a quite a nice mean look. I must admit, I do like the look of it. As I said, I like the sound of it and, and I like the way it, in the way it behaved on the course. I mean, I, t I tested this in competitions and in casual rounds, really enjoy playing it, really like the sound. But the big question is, it, it is like all these clubs as they come out, did I get more distance than the Sim 1 and 2? No, I didn't. Is it more forgiving than the Sim 2? No, it isn't. But what I would say, if you're in the market for a driver, is it worth buying? Yes, it definitely is, and I'd definitely test it. If you've not had a, a new driver for the last five years, then you will definitely notice the benefits of that. It's expensive. So for, you know, for those who are looking to save a bit of money, maybe it's worth going to the Sim 1 and Sim 2 and then waiting for the next couple of generations of this. But as I said, if you've not bought a driver for the last five years, then definitely put this on your testing list. It is a great driver. There is plenty of distance there. You'll, you'll notice, if you have, as I said, if you haven't bought a club for the last five years, you'll certainly notice the dif distance. You'll certainly notice the better dispersion. But if you've got the Sim 1 and Sim 2, is it worth buying? Not at the moment. I'd wait for another couple of generations of this. But definitely put it on your testing list. Good luck. Bye for now.